When it comes to designing, this graphic design video can change potentially everything for you. But only if you properly listen to the three techniques I'm going to show you and then actually go away into your projects and implement the content onto your workflows. So here are two completely different package and brand designs for an essential oil product. Ask yourself this, which one of these designs do you prefer? Now the answer I'm going to give you about this choice might be quite surprising to some. I can soon see why a bit later in today's video. The first technique that can totally reinvent the way you design is something every high level graphic design agency knows about. And it's something you can and you should add into your workflow right away. It's called user center design. Let's take the first bright and bold orange essential oil design. Technically speaking, there's actually not much wrong with this design. However, we are thinking in terms of user centered design. What if as part of our research on this project, we find the target market of the essential oil brand aspires to have quality and exclusive products and that they want to dive deeply into the sensual side of essential oils. If we consider those comments and then look back to this design, things now don't quite fit or seem the best option anymore. And that's simply because we've not considered the user of this product in the right way. So here's what we're going to do about that. On screen is the layout for the orange version. The design is loud, it's bold, and it doesn't necessarily scream exclusive or high quality, or even sensual for that matter. So let's first just strip things back to black and gold for a mysterious, sensual and high quality direction. User centered design aims to consider how the person or people who interact with your design think and act, and also importantly, how they're going to approach the design. Thinking about how the target audience approaches this package design on the shelf, or maybe how they see it in an advert, we can add yet more quality and another dimension to the sensuality of the product. And that's by applying texture to the design. Maybe the finished product will be printed on some high quality texture cardboard, but for the purposes of demonstration today, this works just fine. Now we might also want to continue with the sensual approach and change the font on this specific product type here opting for something more organic. And next, here's something that really fits into the user center design approach. Let's demonstrate this product appeals to a certain audience that we're aiming to target with recyclable and vegan friendly labels. And that's because in the research of this project, that's what we found. On the final layout, we have contrast of a white background and floral motif on the side part of the design. But here's what you really need to pay attention to and what you should take away from this first design technique. It really doesn't matter what I as a graphic designer like or what you as a designer like as well. It doesn't really matter. What really matters is the user and what they like and what they dislike and how they're going to approach the design. That's what really matters. You can like either of these designs or none at all. It really doesn't matter. What matters is if the design appeals to the target audience. That's the key factor. As graphic designers, we do love technology. It's our bread and butter when it comes to our industry. However, for those who have bambinos and bambinas, it can be a worrying landscape at times. I mean, who really knows what they're subject to on their devices day in, day out? And that's where FamiSafe comes into play. It's the most reliable screen time and location tracking parental app out there. And it has a whopping 20,000 reviews online and over 5 million downloads. Now you can easily block certain websites on your kids' phones, detect suspicious texts on social media apps like Facebook, IG, and so on. And crucially, which I know would give many parents peace of mind when needed, you have live location data in real time right into your app. The cool thing is though that you can actually link multiple devices within your family so you can actually keep them safe and happy and give yourself some peace of mind. And you can try FamilySafe right now with three days free of charge and that's via my link in the description box below. And thanks to FamilySafe for sponsoring today's video and keeping family safe the world over. The next technique is a strong skill set you should absolutely have as a graphic designer. We're talking about typography but more specifically pairing fonts properly. But hold up. Let's do this on actual designs so you can fully see how it works and see if you are making the right choices when it comes to font pairing. Let's run with the idea that we are designing social media posts for an urban streetwear brand. Now here's a simple social media post without any typography. And now we need to use two different fonts on this design. So what do we do here? What would you do? 
Taking a look at the style of the fashion and just the style of the design in general, and the fact that it's an urban streetwear brand, we would assume the design is on the unconventional side and aimed at younger people. So for a heading and also main typography section, how about something unique like this? The experimental font chosen here reflects the edgy and contemporary vibe associated with urban streetwear fashion. Its unique shapes, irregular lines, or unconventional style captures the essence of street culture and adds an element of authenticity to the design itself. And when it comes to pairing it up, what do we do then? We can opt for one of my go-to favourites, Aileron, but not because I like it, but because its clean lines and modern design lack the decorative flourishes of serif fonts, and also it's not contemporary and edgy like the main heading is. And this makes it an ideal choice for a secondary text that needs to be clear and easy to read. This simplicity ensures that the focus remains on the main content while providing a structured visual hierarchy. We can also use bolder versions of Aileron and pair them with thinner versions and that works on areas on the design like this. Now the third technique is something that you really should be focusing on in 2024 as a graphic designer and it is something I've touched upon before on this channel however I'm going to break it down into really three easy manageable steps that you can follow. We're talking about narrative design and here's how you can apply narrative design in your projects right now in three easy steps. Step one is to clearly define the purpose and the message of your narrative design. Determine what story you want to tell with the design. And for this, enter Wasabi Doritos. So this product packaging and the promo design is utilizing narrative design in a huge, huge way. With the design, what did the designers conclude in step one of the narrative graphic design process? Remember, step one is where they have to define the purpose and the message. Now I'd say they wanted to convey the Japanese culture, but in a humorous way that appeals to younger people. Furthermore, the narrative is, if you buy this product, you are buying into an exclusive part of Japanese culture and experience. That's the story. The next step is to consider psychology, be it colour, shape, imagery, typography, whatever it is, just consider the content from a psychological point of view. For the Doritos design here, they could have simply just laid out the product over a picturesque scene of Mount Fuji or something like that, but that isn't going to tell the story they aim to tell and it would actually fall flat to a portion of younger audiences. They've gone for a manga style graphic novel design to target younger people and they've included humour within it as well because we can see these two sumos really going at it over the Doritos. The colours are impacting and relate to Japan and also Wasabi. And the third step is to try and include a visual story arc. Now a visual story arc is a sequence of visuals that unfold a story. It captures the audience's attention and also it kind of builds anticipation as well. Now on this design is pretty blatant because we have a graphic novel sequence, but it can be more subtle than this if you see on this design here. A story is essentially a continuum, it's an expanse of time going from A to B. Following these three steps will easily help you incorporate narrative design into your graphic designs if you follow them properly of course. But if you want to learn more things about leveling up as a graphic designer, just click that video on the screen. But until next time guys, design your future today. Peace.